Welcome back. Well, with this M1A, I've taken you on a three-part odyssey of how to accurize it. I started first with glass bedding this rear sight so that it had no wobble anymore. Then we glass bedded the action, and that really tightened things up, and I showed you how very simple that was to do. It's not complicated, and you don't have to go through any heroic measures of gouging out lots of wood and everything, and that really tightened up the groups. Then finally, I showed you how to install shims, gas shims, in this forward section here to unitize this assembly. There is one further consideration, and that's up here. Let's step over to the bench and I'll explain what it is. Now the front sight and flash hider assembly of an M14 and M1A is mounted on a splined barrel. There are three splines cut into this barrel. You can see the you can see the end of it right here. On many rifles, uh, you'll have a tight you'll have a tight fit, but it's not uncommon for those splines to be are a little bit larger than the associated key that fits into them. And the key in, inside, if it's, if it's got any slop to it whatsoever, is going to cause a little bit of radial slop. That's not likely to cause uh, significant group changes. Say if you're firing a session of uh, 20 or 30 rounds, most of your, most of your inertial force is a fore and aft. And very frequently, a, a, a pretty tight installation, uh, even though it has some radial slop, will stay put. But anything that happens to change that or bump it uh, can easily cause uh, a loss of uh, group positioning. In other words, where you, where you were sighted in at one point, you may find that you'd be several inches off. And that owes to the fact that this you're right here, the looseness occurs down here, but by the time you reach a three-quarter of an inch or so height above it, uh, the, the top of the arc has got far more movement. So just a, a couple of thousands down here can translate into a significant amount of movement side to side that can cause a group shift. So we can tighten that up very, very simply. The first thing you're going to need is a good sharp pencil. I recommend that. Now I use I use German silver. In fact, I've got, I've got uh, two of them. I have one here that's, oh, I'd say it's about, this is about uh, 22 caliber. That's the diameter. And uh, they're four inches long. And this one here happens to be about, uh, this one happens to be about, uh, oh, it's about the same as a uh, 6.5 millimeter bullet. And uh, I use them for various things. I've been using them ever since, uh, ever since the early 70s after I went to the Smith & Wesson uh, factory school for two weeks. These were things that we used. We used this German silver quite often in the uh, fitting and assembly of a Smith & Wesson revolver back then. And German silver is really not silver at all. It's 60% copper and uh, mixed with 20% uh, zinc and 20% nickel. So it's very frequently called nickel silver. Um, it was widely favored by uh, Silver Smiths who electroplated silver on top of it, and uh, rather than having sterling silver, which was a solid silver dinnerware, uh, it was electroplated, and this provided a fine base without having when it when it tended to wear off in certain places. Uh, at least it had a silvery appearance instead of having a, uh, a a yellow color. So anyway, it's a very very good it's a very good uh, metal for adjusting. Uh, and peening of uh, rifles and handguns. You're going to need to have a very light hammer. I recommend any gunsmith should have a four ounce ball peen hammer. This is a very small ball peen hammer that you can use on so many things. You don't want to use a, you know, a machinist ball peen, ball peen hammer, which tends to be, you know, six to 20, 10 ounces or even heavier. Blacksmith's hammers, you don't need that. This is just a simple four ounce ball peen hammer. You can also use a tack hammer. Just don't don't get near it with a 16-ounce uh, carpenter's hammer. And you need a uh, 16th of an inch Allen wrench. First of all, we're going to loosen up the uh, set screw that's in the front of this. If I can find it here, well, in the position that I'm in, 
There we go. It's, it's set at about a 20 degree. You'll notice that it's set at about a 20 degree angle. And uh, we first of all, we'll loosen that up. That's a must. You don't have to remove it now. Uh, very, very frequently I see people removing these. Uh, it's totally unnecessary. Just back it off because all it's doing is it's going into this castle, this castle nut here and uh, preventing rotation of that castle nut. Once you're backed off and out, you can look, as I showed you in the uh, video where we installed the gas shims, the, the, uh, that screw can be seen from the side. And once it's, once it's backed out, uh, that's sufficient. As a matter of fact, I can turn it in a little bit more so I don't lose it. And that's all we have to do. Now we're going to take the, uh, I'm going to take my smaller German silver. I'll back this camera off a little bit and uh, give you a better view. I'm going to simply place it into this slot right here, square edge, and give it a sharp. That's all you need to do. You don't need any ridiculous uh, government expenditures of a uh, so-called M14 pliers. You, you just don't need that. It's a, that's, a, that's a silly expenditure. You, all you need is one of those and a, and a slight wrap and it's going to loosen it right up. And it's not going to mar it like those pliers can do. You know, you, they're a clumsy affair. Now, I have one thing to say. I had previously done this in an in a earlier take and I lost the video. The, uh, the video didn't transfer from my uh, SD card onto the computer properly. And uh, as a result, what I was having was uh, problems with my computer, and uh, it, I lost that file. So anyway, what you're going to see is previously accomplished work, but I'll still go over it and uh, show you how it's done. So this, this is simply unscrewed, and once you feel that thread has released, back it off. That's all you need to do. This rifle was very tight to begin with, but I did snug it up a little bit. I, I detected I detected what might have been maybe a half a thousandth movement, and I didn't, I didn't want to have any movement whatsoever. So all we need to do now is dress this section here. I'm going to use the larger of the two now because the larger of the two has a, has a better span. And because this is a rounded surface, it's going to, it's going to stay on that it's going to stay on that uh, top surface, which is the edge. Before I do that, I want to I want to go back and show you what uh, one thing I didn't I didn't do. Before you remove that, before you remove it, I want you to take your pencil and go around this entire collar so that you can see. You can see the limits of the open side. You don't want to be you don't want to be dressing this uh, part right here beyond the pencil line because it's going to show up and it's going to be it's going to be a marred surface. The only thing that's necessary is to uh, dress from the pencil mark in, and I wouldn't even go so far as the edge of the pencil mark. Just stay clear of it by a sixteenth of an inch. And whatever you do, do not do not impact these threads whatsoever. Don't don't get anywhere near those threads. It's only necessary to get an area which is less than a quarter of an inch. In other words, you, all you need to do is just uh, tighten it up. So I'm going to take the larger of the two drifts and I'm going to span it. And here is here's that. You can see that pencil mark right here. So I'm going to take that drift and I'm just going to simply walk it, walk it down. And I'm going to go back the other way. And stay. It's probably better to start at the thread end, the threaded side, because that's going to prevent you from ap accidentally sliding into it. Just repeat that process for each of the uh, for each of the three slots. That's all you need to do. I'm not going to go through the whole process because you can see how simple that is. Once you've once you've done that. You fold it in. You fold it in that slot so that it will tighten up around that key. 
This is a simple 10 minute job. Now all you do is place that castle nut with the forward side of the castle facing the set screw right here. You can see I didn't have to take that set screw out. Slide it, slide it into position. And you can see how that, even just doing what I did, tighten that up significantly. So that's, that's all you need to do. And we're just gonna thread that on. If you do it correctly, you really don't need to, you don't need to be pounding on this. Uh, you, you've, only, you've only tightened it up. You've made it so that it can't swing side to side. And there is no reason to, uh, there's no reason to uh, be concerned about uh, any heavy duty amount of uh, tightening. So once I've got that thread bottomed out with my thumbs, all I have to do is uh, repeat the procedure of lining up that. You want to watch, basically watch this side when it comes to about 3 o'clock. You've got the, uh, and this side here that I'm hitting is at 9 o'clock. Give it a test before you go too far. I can find that with this position I'm in. It's a little hard to see around the camera. Let's see. I'm going to say I'm probably not far enough. I'll give it, it looks like it's, looks like it's about uh, 310 on that. You don't want to go buy it. I think I'm getting there. There we go. Once that screw finds its way into the slot, you're good to go. Don't tighten that up too much. All is necessary. You know, Allen wrenches provide their own torque. When you put an Allen wrench in and you, you turn it with, your, with finger pressure, you don't want to be bending or snapping this Allen wrench, so that provides a perfect torque wrench. Once, you, once you've got that, that tight right there, that's all you need. The job is done. So there you have it. You know, some gunsmithing jobs are really not jobs at all. They're just a matter of understanding how and why. Uh, this happens to be one of the simpler jobs that you'll ever run across. Very, very easy to do. Uh, common, common tools. Yes, you can use a uh, steel drift. The only trouble is, is that it can really do some serious damage to the gun without much difficulty. And, um, you know, steel drifts are better used because you're going to damage a steel drift. They're, they're, hard, they're hard steel and uh, they, they tend to be brittle. If you, if you don't have some give, you know, such as with a pin and things like that, you can snap a uh, steel drift or bend one very easily. So get the appropriate tools. Uh, they're inexpensive. You can usually buy nickel silver rods in, uh, you know, in, in lengths, I think they're usually six to 10 inches long, and it gives you a couple of them. So that's the end of it. I uh, came out very simply and uh, tightened up this front sight. Even the, even the loosest front sight will be easily tightened up using that simple process. So there you go. We're waiting on Christmas. This is the uh, fourth week of Advent and uh, awaiting our Lord to arrive on Christmas. It's a wonderful time of year for me and uh, I, I just can't, uh, I just can't tell you how blessed I am to, uh, to be close to my Lord and uh, to, be, to, to be near him, especially this time of year. Uh, Benny is uh, waiting for me to take him outside, take him for a walk out in the snow. We've got quite a lot of snow out there right now, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So I wish you a very blessed and Merry Christmas, and um, I particularly thank my Patreon donors. My uh, Patreon assistance has been terrific. Uh, all you have to do is go to Patreon slash GunBlue490, and that's all there is to it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless.